In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. You are sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. the paschal mystery within us, that those you were pleased to make new and holy baptism may under your protective care bear much fruit and come to the joys of eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. As the number of disciples continued to grow, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. So the twelve called together the community of the disciples and said, It is not right for us to neglect the word of God to serve at table. Brothers, select from among you seven reputable men filled with the spirit and wisdom whom we shall appoint to this task, whereas we shall devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. The proposal was acceptable to the whole community, so they chose Stephen, a man filled with faith and the Holy Spirit, Philip, Procorius, Nicanor, Timon, and Parmenius, and Nicholas of Antioch, a convert to Jerusalem, Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid hands on them. The word of God continued to spread, and the number of disciples in Jerusalem increased greatly. Even a large group of priests were becoming obedient to the faith. 
The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Come to him, a living stone, rejected by human beings, but chosen and precious in the sight of God. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it says in scripture, Behold, I am laying a stone in Zion, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, and whoever believes in it shall not be put to shame. Therefore, its value is for you who have faith. But for those without faith, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone and a stone that will make people stumble, and a rock that will make them fall. They stumble by disobeying the word, as is their destiny. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own, so that you may announce the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to you, o Lord. Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, then you will also know my Father. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Master, show us the Father and that will be enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you for so long a time and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own. The Father who dwells in me is doing his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. Or else, believe because of the works themselves. Amen, amen, I say to you. Whoever believes in me will do the works that I do and will do greater ones than these because I am going to the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Just so you know, I feel bad for the people that are here with me at Mass trying to serve because of the fact I didn't check my battery before things started and were running around getting me batteries. So I will now try to check my battery more before we begin Mass. You know, in today's second reading from the letter of St. Peter, we hear him say, You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own. Now, we also have a prayer in the, uh, in the Missal that is in the preface. It is something similar to it. It says, a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, and a people set apart. You know, if you look at that, it seems as though that, it, that these words are something that we should be able to control other people, have them do what we want. I mean, if we're truly a chosen race as being followers of Jesus Christ, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own, God's own, Jesus Christ's own, then there should be some type of way that we can lord it over other people. But that is completely the opposite of what it means to be a Christian. In today's uh, first reading, we hear about the apostles choosing the first deacons of the church. You know, the word deacon means to serve. You know, just like we have Deacon Jacob here at the parish, which he is a transitional deacon and will one day be a priest, I myself was also ordained a deacon. And then in the, here at today at Mass, we have two permanent deacons, deacons that will, are not on the way to priesthood, but have been ordained to serve. 
to serve. But yet, you know, although they are ordained to serve, although I have been ordained to serve, we are all called to serve. Yes, different in the, in the way that we serve. I mean, deacons have their certain roles of the church. Priests have their roles. Of course, bishops have their roles. But yet, in being a part of that chosen race, that we are all supposed to serve other people. You know, I thought of an analogy this morning. I don't know if you've ever had this case, but you have a salt and pepper shaker that are, you know, some type of ceramic or whatever, and you go to reach for the salt, and you try and put it on your eggs in the morning, and there's no more salt in that salt shaker. And so you're like, ah, oh, darn, no salt. And then you go into your cabinet with all your spices, and you go, oh, no salt. The difference between a full salt shaker and an empty salt shaker, you cannot tell the difference by looking at the two of them. Now, just so you know, I got clear salt shakers now so that I could tell the difference. But the idea that when you look at them, you can't tell the difference of those ceramic salt shakers. The same is true between seeing the good works of someone who does not believe in Jesus Christ and one who does believe in Jesus Christ. Both of them, as you see their good works, look exactly the same. But yet, the one that does the good works, yet who does not believe in Jesus, is just doing some type of work to help someone, which is a good thing, don't get me wrong. But we, as Christians, go out to serve others in the name of Jesus Christ. That we know that we have been baptized into the body of Christ and that we are supposed to go out and serve. That being filled with the Holy Spirit, filled, salt, filled, that we are supposed to go and serve other people. You know, and the opposite, or the, the same is true with the type of person that we serve. That we don't choose the person based on their looks or whatever, but as we're serving them, we should be serving them as if we are serving Jesus Christ himself. That we do not only see the person in front of us, but we look at the person and we see Jesus Christ. We see the one that we serve, Jesus. And thus when we, we are able to take that gospel into mind, that when we see Jesus, we not only see Jesus, but we see the Father, our loving Father. For ourselves on this day, do you allow Jesus to motivate you? Are you filled with the Holy Spirit? Do you allow Jesus to change your hearts so that you go out and not just only help other people, but you go out and help other people in the name of Jesus Christ? Do you go out and serve other people and see Jesus Christ in them that you are serving so that you might see the Father and continue to receive the grace of Jesus Christ as you go out and serve those who are out there? For you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own, so that you may announce the praise of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, who was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven 
and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy cap and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now place our needs before our Heavenly Father. For the church, that we may find ways to both preach the word and serve our neighbor, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For elected leaders, that they may serve with humility all the people in their care, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to gun violence in our community and in our nation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For mothers, grandmothers, godmothers, and expectant mothers, that they may know the value of their nurturing presence in the love of their families, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us today, that we may find comfort in the Lord when our hearts are troubled, and extend that comfort to others whose hearts are also troubled. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those suffering from the effects of the virus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For John Vidal and Joanna Barbold, as they are being remembered in a special way at this liturgy, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers we hold in our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear our petitions. Help us always to be more like your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. At all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to loud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is a sacrificial victim 
who dies no more, the Lamb, one slain, who lives forever. Therefore, overcometh Paschal joy every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O oh Lord, until you come, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, 
graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to suffer the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am Lord, not worthy Lord, that you should enter under my roof, but only Lord, say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. First of all, I, I guess when I was talking about soul shakers, I could probably use batteries today, too. So you can't tell the difference between a full battery and an empty battery until you try to use your microphone and you find out that it doesn't work. Uh, also, uh, Bishop McClory has uh, put out directives for re, uh, having, or people, having people back at public mass once again. Uh, his directives are basically that we do it safely. You know, he gave us a bunch of things, but the main thing is that, he, that we do it safely, that we do it right, not rushed is what he kept saying over and over again. And so uh, during the, to the rest of the day today and tomorrow, I'll be figuring out how we will be doing that here at St. Matthias uh, Parish. If you want to read his letter, I'm sure it's on the diocesan website. It's also on our Facebook page that we put it uh, uh, two days ago on our Facebook page. Uh, also, uh, finally, today is Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to everyone who is a mother out there or stepmother, grandmother, you know, even those women that act like mothers. I mean, I want to wish you a happy Mother's Day, uh, that, that you, those of you that take care of people, and especially those of you who have raised your children in the faith and have brought them to Jesus Christ. On this day, I have a special prayer that I will pray over you. So for, would those women who are mothers please bow your heads. Loving God, as a mother gives life and nourishment to her children, so you watch over your church. Bless these women that they may be strengthened as Christian mothers. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth. Grant that we, their sons and daughters, may honor them always with a spirit of profound respect. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you. The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace proclaiming the gospel by your lives. Thanks be to God. Proceed.